This is Animal Crossing, except I've replaced every line of dialogue with AI. And now that I've done this, the possibilities are endless. They can tell me current events, they can gossip and start uprisings, and I could even give them more context than the game had originally given them. This has been one of the hardest engineering tasks of my life, and I'm gonna show you exactly how I did it. Let's go. I, I thought that'd be smoother, but oh well. So the idea for this video is very simple. I wanted to take Animal Crossing's villagers and replace their dialogue system with AI so that they can generate new and dynamic conversations. But to do that, I had to learn about this thing. This little purple box runs a PowerPC processor from 2001, codenamed Gecko. It clocks in at 485 megahertz. And to put that into perspective, the phone that you have that you may be watching this on, is dozens of times more powerful than the GameCube ever was. It has 24 megabytes of main RAM, not gigabytes. I literally have browser tabs that require more than that. And here's the real issue. There's no Wi-Fi. there's no ethernet port, it has no modern operating system to manage connections. It was absolutely never ever designed to communicate with the outside world. So how do you connect a cloud-based AI from 2025 to a machine that is fundamentally, physically, and philosophically stuck in 2001. This is assembly, and figuring out what this all means usually takes months, but I got unreasonably lucky. Because when I set out for this idea, there was a massive group of other nerds decompiling this, and they decompiled it and finished it the week before I started. I can't. Like, ah, the moment I thought about it is the moment that it has never been more possible. Ah, so now we're looking at the C code and I'm looking and I'm looking for something obvious. I'm looking for dialogue something, but I see M underscore message. I'm like, that seems kind of reasonable. It took me a little bit to figure out exactly how it was working, but I was like, this is where it's happening. This is it. And so I wrote a little test. I was like, can we replace the dialogue? And we can. I was like, ha. Huh. This is going great. I've already changed the dialogue. Well, it gets a little more complicated. If you remember, I said the GameCube has no way to speak to the external world. And I'm thinking to myself, well, wait, I have the code. Why don't I just write in an API call or something? It's not that simple because Animal Crossing would have had to have built its game around having network infrastructure. And so I would have either had to write all this network infrastructure or find another way. I chose to find another way and I thought, okay, what if I could like write to a file on my computer and so the game would write to it and say like, oh, hey, here's all the context. Here's everything you need. Uh, I'm ready to receive a message and then it would wait and then I would have a script that's like, hey, I see that I'm going to take all that context. I'm going to feed it to an LLM and I'm going to put it out. Well, I also could not get the GameCube to access the file system outside of it. And so that didn't work either. And so finally, I had to dig a little deeper. I learned about IPC, which is called Interprocess Communication. It's a fancy way of just saying that like two things are talking to each other, but it sounds cool. And the way that it's usually used for games and hacks and mods is that you allocate a portion of memory of the GameCube to be essentially a mailbox. And the same way I thought of writing to a file, you just replace file with memory. I was like, that is so cool. That is sick. And that led me down the next rabbit hole. We have this chunk of memory that is going to serve as our mailbox. But now that means we have to actually find the memory addresses that we're interested in, which means I'm back to this. 
And so I did try stepping through the game and pausing and seeing what is happening at different memory addresses, but it was too much and I decided that an easier way would just be to create my own tool that is used to search through memory. So I wrote this script that would attach to Dolphin's emulator and scan its memory in real time. Let me give you a little demo and I think it'll make a little more sense. So step one is I'd walk up to a villager and the moment their text box would appear, I would freeze the game. And then I would run my script, which will scan all 24 million bytes of memory for that exact string of text. Oftentimes though, the same text might exist in multiple places in memory. So how do we know which one's the real one and which one is responsible for what's displayed on screen? Well, I would have to cross reference. So I would unfreeze my game. I'd write down all of these memory addresses. I would talk to somebody else and then I would search for their name to figure out which memory block belonged to the active speaker. And after hours of this talking and freezing and scanning and cross referencing over and over again, I finally found the stable memory addresses that were responsible for who is speaking and for what they're saying. So now I'm trying to figure out, okay, I found the memory address. Can I write to it? So I try something simple and then I broke it. I think I wrote to the wrong address. So then I went back and I did the whole thing again. And then I was like, oh no, this is the actual address that we're interested in. I triple checked, I ran it again, and then I was able to write, but there was something wrong. My game was frozen or it looked like that. I could see the character moving, but nothing was happening. There was no progression. I was like, what? What is going on? Why, why am I stuck here? What do I do? I was so close. It received the letters, but it didn't actually understand what I was sending it because I was sending it plain text, but Animal Crossing doesn't speak in plain text. It speaks in its own secret encoded language. And I was missing the grammar. I was missing what they call the control codes. Think of it like HTML on a website. Your browser doesn't just display words. It reads tags like this one to know how to make text bold. And Animal Crossing does the same thing. The game's dialogue isn't just a string of characters. It's a sequence of data with special commands that tell the game's engine what to do. These commands control everything. The text color, the pauses, the sound effects, the characters' emotions, even the multiple choice menus. And so if you don't end your message with the proper end conversation control code, the game just waits forever. It's waiting for a command that I wasn't sending over. So how do you figure out what these secret commands are? Well, luckily I didn't have to because these nerds are the best nerds I've ever come across. They already did the hard work over the years. And so there it was. I had a list of every control code in the game. One cool part is I found out that there's this magic number that's the prefix byte. And whenever the game sees this, it knows that the next byte isn't gonna be a character, it's gonna be a command. But obviously just knowing the codes wasn't enough. I had to build the tools to actually use them. So first I needed a decoder, which is a script that could read the game's raw memory and translate it into a human readable format. And once that was working, I needed the reverse an encoder, a script that could take my text with my own tags and convert it back into the exact sequence of bytes the GameCube would understand. So with my new encoder, I went back to that frozen screen and tried again, but this time I wasn't just sending plain text. This time I was speaking its language. And with that, I can now read the dialogue, but more importantly, I can write the dialogue. And even cooler, was that now I knew how to add all those fun text effects, the pauses, the colors, the, the emotes, the sound effects that make the game feel so cool. With this, the hardest hacking was done. And now the fun part could begin. Actually building the AI brain for our villagers. The plan was simple. Get context about the villager, feed it to an AI, and write the response back to the game. First things first, for an AI to talk like a villager, it needs to know about that villager. Who is Stinky? What's his personality? And what's his catchphrase? My first instinct was to try and extract all this info from the game's memory in real time, but I quickly realized that I was over-engineering. Why try to pick a lock if the door's wide open? The ultimate Animal Crossing encyclopedia already exists. The fan wiki. So I built a simple web scraper 
a Python script that goes to the wiki, finds a villager's page, and pulls all the key data. It then organizes everything into a clean character sheet. And now, whenever a conversation starts, my script just looks up the villager we're talking to and hands the AI their entire life story. But just having knowledge isn't enough. The dialogue needs to feel alive. It needs that flair, that thing that makes Animal Crossing dialogue feel like Animal Crossing. And that's where I hit my next problem. At first, I tried to get a single AI model to do everything. Write dialogue, stay in character, and use all those special control codes that we just built. The results were kind of a mess. The AI was trying to be a creative writer and a technical programmer at the same time. And honestly, it was bad at both. And so I split the two into a team. We have a writer and a director. First, the character sheet gets sent to the writer AI, and the writer's only job is to be creative. It focuses on writing dialogue that is funny, interesting, and perfectly in character. Then, that output gets passed to the director AI, whose job is to add the magic. It reads the raw text and decides how to shoot the scene. It adds a pause for dramatic effect, it emphasizes important words of color, and it chooses the perfect sound effect or expression to match the mood. And the coolest part is, after all that, I never had to change a single line of the game's original code. Everything was done externally through the little memory mailbox. And now with the brain fully built and the villagers ready to talk, it was playtime. The first thing we want to see is how well do they do at just staying in character, being themselves, adding those pauses, the sound effects, the colors. Let's see. There's my boy Scoot. He's a jock. Let's see what he's got. Oh, I like that. Dude is highlighted. Yeah. Okay, that is a, that is totally what Scoot would say. I think they do a really good job of capturing the length, like how long somebody speaks. Nate is a lazy villager, and so let's see if we do a good job with that. Okay, that's lazy. One thing that I think is missing, uh, they give villagers a mood. And I could go through the game and find what their mood is, but I could also just assign them a mood. Aw, is Cookie feeling lonely? Oh. Um, I do like the shocked with the thunder. Aw, Cookie. Okay, it's okay. Aw, that was sweet. I man, that that dialogue really took me on an emotional roller coaster. <laughs> Did I add thirsty? I added like 20 moods. So I is is thirsty even a mood? Damn, this guy's so thirsty. Someone Oh. That's good. Okay. I love when they use emotion, like the emotes, and I love when they use the sound effects with the emotes. Uh, sadly, Nate did not realize that he is right next to his fridge and can just turn around and get some water. Maybe he's too lazy to do it though. You know what? We're gonna add way more emotes. Hey, I love that. Good for you, Cookie. Oh, that was really good. I love that. We can do anything. I I really like that. I'm emoting out of joy. Oh, I haven't asked you how you're feeling. What's up, Scoot? This guy's hungry. Oh, that's really good. Okay, I think I'm just gonna keep the emote a lot. Okay, let's go. Oh my God. Why are you so mad? Wow, okay. That was so expressive. Every emote was perfect. Screw Astrid. Um, okay, there wasn't actually a tree. It's another location. That would be kind of difficult. Uh, a cheap way that I'm thinking is that I can actually take a screenshot of the game and send it in, and that would actually do a pretty good job. Um, but another way, but then I'd have to use a more complicated model, uh, and it would mean that these conversations would take longer. Um, or, ooh, something I could do, I think all their schedules are actually posted online. And so I could, 
I could scrape their schedules, get the time of the day in-game, or in real life since they're correlated, and then actually figure out where they would be. I don't know if their schedules are, are real like that, though. I don't know if it's like Stardew or if they're kind of randomized. I guess they have a general schedule. Um, but oh well. I am here. Ah, oh, that was good! Oh! It's talking about the flowers! Wait, that's sick. Oh, that was great! I didn't even think about the flowers. It's doing better than I could have. I can't tell if he's happy about this or not happy. Uh, excuse me. Dude, you could chill. Your town, excuse me. Bro, what the hell? He also looks angry. We've given our villagers access to current events and they're gonna tell us some stuff. Hey Cookie, what's going on in the world? No, I did not see the news. Tell me Cookie, what's up? No! <laughs> Is, do you mean a democratic city? <laughs> the fucking thunder sound effect. <laughs> no, that is not the right. <laughs> that is not the right effect. Cookie. Uh, okay, maybe this is not the best way to get your news, but it certainly. <laughs> Glad I live here instead of that damn ass blue city. Cookie, what the hell? Yeah, nothing ever happens here in this damn ass Animal Crossing town. If only we had murder. Ooh. Okay. No. <laughs> what? No, what happened? <laughs> oh my God. Geopolitical topics, no. Well, just an aside, besides all that Israel-Palestine stuff, uh, I'm gonna be sparkly. Okay, let's spread some propaganda. He literally is. Yeah, go run and tell the others. I Yo, I agree, Sherry. More what? Tell me, tell me. No, not the blush. I mean, you seem to be affording it just fine. <laughs> Monique spreading the news. Even in this situation, you're asking me for more bells. You are truly the greediest of the greedy.